Hello, I'd like to take a minute to walk you through some of the cool features of the new Aprimo Voice platform that we are introducing to our customers. Um, this forum is for the collection of feedback and ideas from customers, and uh, we're really excited to give this opportunity to our customers to interact and communicate with Aprimo in a more intimate level around features and functionality. So first off, let's talk about how you get signed up in Aprimo Voice. So when you first come into the application, You'll see the home screen here uh, once you hit the URL. If you have not signed up yet or aren't signed in, you'll see the sign in sign up here in the top right corner um, will be available. Uh, clicking on that will pop up this little window and this is where uh, you put in an email address. We do recommend that you put in a corporate email address, so the one that has your actual corporate domain at the end, so not like a personal Gmail or, or other kind of account, uh, so that we can clearly identify who you are from a customer standpoint. If you are a new customer, when you put in the email address, you will then be prompted to sign up and create a password. If you're an existing customer, then you'll be recognized and prompted to put in uh, your password here to sign in. Once you've signed in, you'll then see your name in the upper right corner, and off of your name in the corner here, you have a couple of options for personalizing your profile. Uh, first, you can go into your user profile, and uh, one of the things you can do is set up an avatar for yourself, so a picture or just a friendly image that you want associated with your account. Um, and then another thing we recommend is updating your display name. Uh, it will, by default, be the beginning of your email address, so uh, it might be nice to change this into an actual legible name for your Yourself. And then obviously if in the future you need to ever change or manage your password, you can come in here to do that as well. Um, also within your uh, profile area is your notification management. And uh, I do suggest you come in and set up your notification management. This is a key way to stay engaged with what's going on in a Primo Voice so you can sign up to be proactively notified by the platform when uh, certain key actions take place, like maybe a new comment has been created or a topic has changed status. Um, so you can sign up for these larger events that you want to be notified for. And then underneath here, you can do a more refined subcategory of information you want. I personally would suggest that you do not sign up for all ideas um, and everything across the system because I think you may find yourself getting a high volume of notifications from the system if you do it at that level. That's certainly your choice, but we would likely recommend that you do a more refined setting, so potentially picking just the functional categories or areas of the platform that are of most interest to you. So maybe like system administration, integrations, insight reporting, and then the key modules that you own. So if you're plan and spend, include that. If you aren't, maybe don't. Again, that is your choice as a customer to decide what level of notification you would like, as well as then maybe some sub-tags that are of key interest for you. So if certain ideas come in that are tagged for annotations, you always want to be notified regardless of what category that idea might have come under, um, as an example. So once you've set up your user account, your user profile, and your notification management, you're all set. And you can now switch back to the main home screen here in the Aprimo Voice platform. Um, you can always get back to the home screen just by clicking on the Primo Voice um, home icon here in the upper left corner. Uh, let's talk about some of the information you have visible to you then here on this initial screen. So what you've got here is the default forum of all ideas. Uh, the all ideas forum is then broken into categories. So you have productivity management, digital assets, and on down the line. And you'll notice that most of these categories line up a lot to the functional modules that we have in the Primo platform overall. Um, so this is where you can go in and see the different ideas and discussion points that are going on in those different categories of the platform. Uh, you also may, as a user, have access to some additional forums depending on who you are and what you've been invited to. So for example, if you're part of an early adopter program, you might see an additional private forum. So these are invitation only forums that might show up on your right hand nav bar. And then also, you know, based on maybe your relationship or history, you might have access to certain other archives or other forums as well over here on the right. Um, you can then, from this main screen, kind of browse and look in at different ideas that are in the system. If you're just curious to kind of see what's been submitted, what things are already out there. So you can drill into different product categories. So, you know, I can go into productivity management and then now I'm going to see 
all of the ideas that have been tagged into the productivity management category. I have options to do further filtering, maybe based on status or based on certain tags. I can change the sort order from, you know, to the newest one that's been added versus the top rated idea and really kind of move around um, and, so, and search through different ideas um, within this specific category. Um, I can always go back to the root level of all ideas as well. And then another mechanism for finding ideas is doing searching. So um, you, this has you know, um, a very robust search feature to come in and kind of search across different ideas and see what's already out there. So if I search, for example, on Office, I see that there's already an idea here around out of office and uh, updating the out of office feature that's already in a primo. Maybe I want to do um, a look for classification, so a digital asset management related topic around managing asset classifications and permissions. Let's see what different people have submitted here and I can see, you know, a different set of ideas that have come in around um, classification, right? So this one particularly, right, you know, uh, around maybe the Adobe Creative Cloud Connector was one that was of interest to me, um, or managing classifications um, that was recently done um, has been moved to the done status, so maybe I'm curious about that. So I could drill into one of these different topics and, uh, and look at more specifics there. Um, once I drill into a particular topic, I'm now also able to see you know, the full description of the idea and what has been added into it. And I can also add my own comments as a user. So I could click in here and, you know, add, you know, my own feedback, right? You know, I agree with this. This is a, a key pain point for me as well. Or um, I like this idea, but it would be great if this also could solve this additional problem or another need. So this is where you can expand on an idea, potentially start a dialogue with a an existing customer who already created the idea, as well as that dialogue with product management where you're giving us your thoughts and concepts around um, this idea, and then we can ask questions back for clarification, and you can have a little more of a, uh, a back and forth discussion through the course of this idea as well. Um, this is also then where you can vote up and down on ideas. So, you know, you like the topic, you agree with the concept, or uh, you don't really think this would fit your environment, or if you made this change, it might have an adverse effect to you as a customer. We also want that feedback. So not all feedback needs to be positive. This is where we can have that open dialogue. So if one customer is suggesting an idea that isn't taking into account maybe some of the business use cases that you would have that might be adversely affected by making a change in the product in that way, or their idea isn't accounting for something that you would need it to account for in order for it to be a fit, you can certainly include that into your comments and feedback as well. And so we want this to very much be an interactive system where you're able to collaborate and add comments and have that dialogue back and forth. So that's where you can do some searching and look up different ideas and different concepts that are already in. Um, if we look at, you know, a few other um, concepts here around an idea, I think it's really powerful to show, you know, the ways to set up, you know, a nice rich idea to get a lot of feedback to make it very clear for customers, you know, your, your fellow um, customers what the business case is that you're trying to make and why this would be important. So, you know, being descriptive is important, um, you know, taking advantage of the fact that you can include screenshots and images in um, different parts of your description and your idea to really help convey and make it clear what areas you're talking about and what particular pieces of the product so that it's very clear for others coming in after you that find your idea to understand what you're suggesting and how it would impact them. So um, at this point, if we wanted to create um, our own new idea, let's say that we wanted to be able to set your out of office primo directly from MS Outlook, right? So you type in your new concept for your idea. When you've put in all of those key phrases, this is where you're then going to see what else is in there that might have something similar to it, right? So there's this out of office should honor the start and end dates that are entered. Similar, but it's not exactly what I'm wanting to enter here. 
Um, so that's not quite the right idea. I look down through the rest and I do not see any idea that looks similar to the one that I'm about to enter myself. So in that case, I'm going to carry forward and click add new one. Um, that's going to jump me into the submitting new topic idea. Um, this is where I might sit down and think, okay, let me phrase this a little better. Um, what I really want to say is within MS Outlook, add a link to set the Supremo out of office settings as well. And then this is where you would come in and once you've typed in your heading, it's going to try one more time to just see are there are we sure there aren't topics that already exist right so the key here is we're trying to consolidate ideas and feedback so it's going to continue to nudge you to look and make sure that there isn't already an existing idea in the platform very similar to what you're about to enter so it's again it's just a way to consolidate that feedback but once you get this prompt a second time um, once you've filled in your header completely if you still aren't finding what you look for you would click on continue to my topic and then this is where you would you know add your full description for your idea here right so we want you to be you know um, descriptive enough to convey your idea, right? You don't have to write a novel by any means, but if you can give some key business case use cases for why it's important, again, like including a screenshot or some imagery, if it's if it's relevant, always helps convey an idea more cleanly as well. But this is where you would put in your full idea and you do have full rich text capabilities up here to do a lot of formatting, insert links, insert images, um, you know, do other different formatting of your idea to really help convey that description. And then lastly, you can categorize your idea. So what product area is this most relevant to? Um, so you would pick the product area and the category. And once you've completed the full idea and added in your full description, you would then post that idea. Um, I'm not going to do that right now because I didn't really fill out my full, full description here. But um, this is where you would then post that idea. Once that idea is now posted, it's going to go into the platform. Initially, as a new user, the first few ideas you post will go into a queue to be reviewed and approved by a Primo product management. Since this is an open system, we are promoting that all customer, you know, users that are key stakeholders and business owners can set up accounts here. So we do need to manage that the right people are actually setting up accounts and submitting ideas. So the first couple of ideas you submit We'll go into a queue where a Primo product management team will be notified. We'll look at that idea. We might, um, you know, adjust it a little bit in that we might add our own comment to it. Um, we might ask some questions. We'll change it to a, the appropriate status. And we will also tag it into the right different categories, right? Is this relevant to certain parts of the product versus others? Well, once we've tagged that and, and approved it, it will then move out and be available to all customers to see in the general forum. Once you've submitted a couple of ideas, the first two ideas you submit will go in for approval. After they have both been approved successfully, you will become a trusted person in the system and all remaining ideas that you create will automatically be visible right after you post them. A Primo product management will still evaluate the idea and move it between the different statuses. So all ideas initially come in in a status of new and then a Primo product management looks over those ideas and will shift them through different stage gates of qualified to in process, uh, committed and done, or they might move into statuses of shelved or rejected if we deem them as not being appropriate fits for the product direction or roadmap. Um, and we have more, uh, more of an overview of the different statuses and what they mean and the state flow available in some of the supporting materials that came along with this video. So this is really um, all of the key points I wanted to touch on around this new platform. We're really excited to be introducing this to customers. I think we're going to find you know, a really good collaborative environment here where we can work as a community to share ideas and work together, have more of an open dialogue and really 
hone in better on what's going to add the most business value for the broader set of our customers based on you know the combined feedback and voice of the Aprimo community. So I want to thank you for your time today and uh, we will be hosting a follow-up Q&A session with customers as well once you've had a chance to get into the platform use it a little more and get more comfortable with it there will be a session in March for you to ask questions directly to Aprimo and get some some of those questions answered. Thank you very much.